I'm going to boil down a lot of that. And you'll see, you, you've got the main sense there, okay? But the only, I'm going to use one, two, three, four, five words. Okay? Force is <laughs> proportional <laughs> to... That's all I'm going to say. Now, I know there are, there are some slight more nuances going on in Newton's second law, okay? But this is enough for our purposes. Remember, mathematically, we're viewing this, this very sort of um, um, idealized world. Okay? So that's okay. Just because something is idealized doesn't mean it's meaningless or useless. Actually, it's super, super useful because then you can actually solve the darn thing. As opposed to if you were thinking about all of the intricacies and complexities that you don't even understand, you can't solve it. You can't actually work with it. But I can get from this enough to actually you know, solve a problem and work out what's going on, as you'll see in a minute. Okay? So, um, our mathematical way to beat the pants off of this is just to say F equals M A. Okay? Yeah. It'd be sigma. Ah, okay. Now, again, so there are a few nuances here, depending on like the way you describe the force. You also see it sometimes written that F is not equal to M A, but F is uh, proportional to M A, right? And you've seen that proportionality symbol before. Now, can I emphasize to you? It really doesn't matter which one you see because mass is a constant, right? That will, where we're talking about objects that do not spontaneously increase or decrease in, in mass, okay? So therefore, if you say F is equal to MA or F is proportional to MA, because M itself is a constant, it doesn't matter, right? It just gets factored into that constant in the same way that if you've got a string of indefinite integrals, right? All of their constants, you can say, well, constant, 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 constant. You can just put them in one pile and say there's one constant at the end. Okay, you don't lose any information. It's all still in there. Okay. Now, uh, we need to at this point we need to talk about some units. So the unit of force is the newton, right? Because we are what to this guy. So one newton, one newton. I should say that's um one, not in. Okay. Can someone tell me what the definition of a newton of force is? How much force is it? It's enough force to do what? Now, no, 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 no. Think, think, think. This here, right, is kind of like a, a differential statement. Okay, so you've got a force over here. It should make sense to you that there's going to be a mass and an acceleration over here, right? So a force turns into newtons. What mass are we going to talk about? One kilogram. Okay, so it's one kilogram accelerated at one meter per second per second. Okay, so this is what a Newton is. This is what we define as a Newton, right? So just pay attention because sometimes the questions will be given to you in terms of acceleration, in which case you don't worry about Newtons and kilograms, and other times it will be given to you in terms of forces, so pay careful attention because you'll be off by a factor, depending on the mass of the object you're dealing with. All right, I think that's all I wanted to say about um, the second law. Let's do the third one. Um, now, the third law has a very famous and pithy sort of summary statement of it, and I'm going to boil it down even further than that because I just want to have as little as possible to remember. Um, my, have, I, have I got five words again? Yeah, I got five words again. My most um, boiled down version of Newton's third law of motion is that actions have, can someone tell me? Equal, equal opposite reactions. reactions. And of course, the, um, the nice poetic uh, way of saying this is that for every action, there is, an equal, there is an equal and opposite reaction, which is lovely and rolls off the tongue. Just have all these extra words in there, all these conjunctions, okay? So I've boiled it down a little bit. It doesn't roll off the tongue as, nice, uh, as nicely, but it's, it's very similar, okay? Now, for me, in some ways, this is the most famous of um, news laws. Um, I always need a picture in my mind, right? So the two pictures that I always like, because, you know, it's Olympics anyway, is um, a swimmer and a runner. Okay, a swimmer and a runner. Now, what's going on here? When a swimmer is moving through the water, okay, maybe you in fact want to uh, embarrass yourself and draw like a really bad swimmer, okay? Um, when you've got a swimmer, okay? This is a terrible diagram. Now, the swimmer is moving forward. Okay? They're moving forward, but how is it that they are creating forward motion? And the answer is, yeah, thank you. They are pushing the water. 
they're pushing the water backwards, so the water is reacting and pushing against them. Does that make sense? So that's what creates this change in movement. It's the same deal with a runner. How is it similar and how is it different? The ground pushes you yeah, very good. So, so this is why, in fact, I'm even going to do this. Maybe you want to draw this as well. When a runner begins at the Olympics, right, they don't just have a standing start. What do they do? They've got, they've got blocks, right? Now think about this. Now, what's the point of the blocks? What's the point of the blocks? Look at them. Look. Okay, because, because you want to go forward. You don't want to go up, right? So therefore, if you can angle the force of you know, jumping off, in this direction, further in the opposite direction, so let me draw it now, right? This way, rather than like say this way, do you see which way the reaction force is going to go? The same amount of energy will propel you more in that direction than just, just simply upwards, okay? So actions have equal and opposite reactions. Yes? Isn't there another analogy with swimmers where they have their blocks, their jumping blocks have that angle? Yeah, that exactly right. Well? Exactly right. So if you look closely, you'll see it, it is precisely the same principle. So exactly you don't want to embarrass yourself. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I won't, I won't even bother. <laughs> Though I should say, before, before those blocks did get their angle and that extra bit, yes. right, how did they do it? You stand on the edge. Or yeah, so number one, you stand on the edge, so your jump sort of goes that way. And also, you've got your, you've got your whole like your whole body is moving forward, right? So you've got your arms which actually propel you that way and so that's why your motion equals reaction. 